Boy, would you look at those numbers roll. <laughs> Um, this is usdebtclock.org tracking the debt here in America. Um, right here we have, uh, where's the, right, right there, U.S. national debt, 32 trillion 716 billion, or 96 million, and then I can't get the rest of those because they're constantly changing. U.S. total debt, 102 trillion dollars. Um, and you get into this whole thing here, student loan debt, 1.8 trillion. Uh, credit card 1.3 trillion um, very interesting website but uh, definitely showing the sin of this nation uh, the Bible never speaks well of debt unless you are uh, Gene Kim right here we're going to go over this video here is is it a sin when I need to be in debt uh, one of the best ways to teach the Bible if you aren't aware of this is to show false prophets false teachers how they pervert and twist the scriptures and then I can undo that and you can see oh, okay that's how the Bible or what the Bible actually teaches not what he's saying um, you can watch my study I did here American slavery never ended getting into the thing of debt and how that they use debt to enslave people you're enslaved to the bank and why as a Christian you should try to be out of debt and I understand very much that a lot of people get into debt and whatever else but try all that you can to pay it down that's a great freeing feel feeling to not be in debt but um, a hireling, uh, the Bible defines a hireling. Let me show you here really quickly. Um, in John chapter 10, let's get to John chapter 10. Um, it says here, verse 12, But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. Um, hirelings will not take real strong stands on things that are not very popular, on things that they themselves are very much guilty of. Um, these guys like this, they can't really show the blessing of the Lord in their life and, and the ability to say, hey, I really do follow the scriptures. You know, they don't really say that. It's just kind of, uh, well, you know, you don't really have to follow everything and whatever. And you're going to see some real... Uh, uh, gymnastics here so to speak some flips and back flips and all kinds of things to try and make the Bible teach that it's okay to get into debt if you need to if you don't need to it's wrong but if you need to well yeah we all have to do it so let's watch this again to show the how false hirelings like well he's a real hireling <laughs> uh, false prophets do things let's watch would you do a video on finance debts so that's the next question all right, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 15. Proverbs chapter 11, we're going to read verse 15. And then we're also going to look at Romans chapter 13 and verse 8. So, concerning about getting into debt, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 15, it says that the Bible it doesn't recommend getting in debt to a stranger because he will have to risk paying the consequences. That is the main essential problem. So it is not recommended to get into debt. Proverbs chapter 11, and we're going to look at verse 15. Proverbs chapter 11, I'm going to read verse 15. The Bible says right here, He that is surety for a stranger shall smart for it, and he that hateth suretyship is sure. So notice right here that if you are in debt to someone, that you have to pay it back. And you can notice from this verse, it doesn't really recommend it. The tone of but it doesn't really recommend it. No, it's saying don't do it. <laughs> it's not it doesn't really. See again, learn you know just simple English here. Doesn't really recommend. No, it's wrong. It says you know don't do it. The voice in this verse is not positive. We're going to also look at Romans 13, verse 8. Perhaps one of the most popular verses. Romans chapter 13. And we're going to look at verse 8. Notice that the Christian is not supposed to be in debt. Romans. Okay, he just said the Christian is not supposed to be in debt. Now watch him backpedal on it. It says, owe oh, no man anything. Very clear. Romans chapter 13. We're going to look at verse 8. So Christians, we are forbidden to get involved in that.
Christians are forbidden to get involved in that. And again, watch your backpedal now. Well, it's not really recommended. Let me switch, switch it right here. It's not recommended. It's not recommended. We're going to look at Romans chapter 13, and we're... If it's not recommended, why is it not recommended? I'm going to read verse 8. Oh, no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Okay, so here's a problem then right here, all right? So then, does that mean I should not get in debt at all or declare bankruptcy or borrow loans when it comes to necessary circumstances? Oh, when it comes to necessary circumstances. And where's that at in the text? Oh, no man anything unless it's necessary. doesn't say that. So that's the problem. So here's the idea. You, what you got to understand about God is this. When he gives a simple rule, do not get into debt. So that's a rule you should follow in everyday life. But he's going to give you certain situations that you can do that. Really? Uh, where does the Bible say that? Where? See, it, how is this different than Roman Catholicism? See, uh, well, we know that the Bible says, oh, no, man, anything. But according to traditions, see, it's not the scriptures alone. It's now you can throw in some tradition in there. See, we, he didn't recommend the catechism. He didn't recommend the catechism. Nobody's going with his own feelings, his own thoughts. You know, unless you need to. You know, you know, if in necessary circumstances, it's okay to get into debt. Where does it say that? Nowhere. Show the scripture. He won't. Because he can't. He's not a preacher. He's a hireling. So when the Bible gives you a general, so this is a general rule, see? Not every single detail you do. It's uh, Not every single detail you do. Uh, why does it say, oh, no man, anything? I would say it's a, that's every single detail. The general rule to follow. But then here are certain details that God allows you to get into debt. Look uh, okay, show proof. Now watch, watch what it, where he goes with this. This is really funny. Look at Psalms, uh, first, second Kings chapter four, second Kings chapter four, verse one. Second Kings chapter four. So notice that borrowing or people loaning things, that it is sometimes biblical because when it comes to necessary circumstances. So here's something important you gotta understand. If it's not a necessary circumstance, you should never ever get into debt. But if you are... Okay, then let's just go with that for a minute. If it's not a necessary circumstance, then you should never get into debt, okay? Can people have a house without debt? We do. I own two properties. Uh, this office and the land where we live. I own two. Paid less than the tax assessed value for both of them and paid off both of them right when I bought them. Uh, scrimping and saving and things like that. So is it possible to live without being in mortgage debt? Yes. And a lot of other brethren out there have the same thing. So that's possible. Is it possible to get a vehicle without debt? Without an auto loan? Yes. I have several vehicles. See, oh, well, yeah, but, you know, that's, that's not what we're talking about. See, what he's trying to get to here is it's not possible to live without debt today when it definitely is. Unless you want to live in a very high rent district or whatever else, like where he lives, uh, in the city there. Couldn't handle living out in the country, I guess. But, uh, you know, uh, see, so you have to justify it. Let's continue. Are in a necessary circumstance, then by all means, you should. You should. Look at Second Kings. You should. You should get into debt. Yeah. <laughs> where? Let's look at what he says here about this verse. Chapter 4, uh, verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And notice this, the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. So she obviously does not want her sons to be slaves. So this is something serious. So what did God say? Look at verse 3. Then he said, Go borrow thee. Vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, uh, uh, even uh, empty uh, vessels. Oh, hold on. Hold on there. Did you see he skipped verse 2? He said, what did God say? No, Elisha said it. Verse 3. Then he said, go. He does not want her sons to be slaves. So this is something serious. 
So what did God say? Look at verse 3. Then okay, wait, hold on. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Uh, tell me, what that hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Okay, so she has the oil there. All right. Then he said, Go borrow these uh, vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. All right. Now he's going to try to make that into money. See, it's the same thing as going to the bank and getting a mortgage. It's identical. <laughs> no, she had the oil there, and he's saying, Borrow some vessels from your neighbors because I'm going to give you more oil. It's not money, not even close to what you would do when you're get, you know, getting a mortgage. Where's, where's the contract that she's signing? Where's the monthly fee that she has to put out there and whatever else? And if you know she breaks one of the neighbor's vessels, are they going to confiscate something because she had collateral or something like this? It's not even close to being the same. But this is what you do when you're a lying false prophet. You will search through the scriptures to try to find anything that you can use to twist it and make it teach what you want to teach. Say what the Bible does not say, in other words. Let's continue. Then he said, Go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Notice what it says right here. Borrow not a few. So there is plenty of loaning right here going on. Plenty of loaning right here going on. So notice that in this desperate, necessary situation, uh. it should be done. It becomes... It's not a loan as in a you know, mortgage or an auto loan or whatever else. It has nothing, there's no comparison between the two. Hey, can I borrow some pots? I have to get, you know, some more oil here so I can sell it. You know, borrow not a few. That means you should really get yourself in debt. Yeah, well, we'll see how that works out when the dollar crashes, you know, in this country. Sin, look at Psalms 37, Psalms 37, Psalms 37. So when does it become sin? Getting into debt becomes sin when you don't pay back. All right? How many <laughs> guilty Americans don't do this? See? So we always borrow, borrow, and then get take out loans, take out loans, etc., etc. And then when you don't pay them back, you know what that is, according to the Bible? That's stealing, all right? That is stealing. I don't care how corrupt the government is, all right? Government's already corrupt. That doesn't mean you have to be corrupt like them. Amen. So the thing is, is that you have to... Well, but how did the government get to the point of, of power that it has? They got there through debt, artificial wealth creation, through the fiat currency, the Federal Reserve notes. As long as you pay it back, though, it's okay. To pay back. You have to pay back. If you don't, then that's automatically considered sin. We're going to look at the book of Psalms, chapter 37, and we're going to look at verse 21. The Bible says, The wicked borroweth, and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy, and give it. So notice right here, wicked people don't pay back. Wicked people don't. Uh, no, it actually said the wicked borroweth. Okay. That's what it said there in the text. Verse 21, the wicked borroweth and payeth not again. That's what's going on there. Oh, but I guess the righteous borroweth and pay again. Where does it say that? It doesn't. Show me some good references in the scriptures to bar borrowing money and things like that, getting yourself into debt. Show me some good references to it. That's why I've been telling people for a long time, for years now, don't follow this guy. He's not legitimate. I'll pay back. We're going to also look at the book of James chapter 4. James chapter 4. We're going to close with James 4 and Philippians 4. Philippians 4 and James 4. Here are two rules to follow that can help you concerning debt. Concerning debt. I'll show you one he's not going to show you. Okay. The borrower is servant to the lender. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Right there you can see it. Um, you're a servant to the lender. You're a bond servant. You have signed a death pledge, a mortgage, when you have a house. Well, I've done that, Brother Brian. I guess I'm going to hell now. I didn't say that. What I'm saying is you need to get out of that situation. Work very hard to get out of debt. God does not want you buried in debt like that. All right? But he won't cover that verse. And the rich ruleth over the poor. How do they do that? 
how does how do rich people rule over the poor? Well, that's right by having them be their bond servants. And you can watch my study. I talked about that. And the thing of mortgage-backed securities. When you sign your name to a piece of paper, you sign your name to the piece of paper there, the mortgage. They put that on the stock market, and they trade you on the stock market. That's why the Bible says about being surety for a stranger. You don't know who owns your mortgage. You don't know who owns your auto loan. They, they swap that stuff all the time. It could be somebody in communist China that owns you your mortgage. Well, you, ultimately, because you're a mortgage-backed security. He won't talk about that stuff. You know, it's kind of funny. A PhD wouldn't know much, you know, more than this. But uh, he must not teach very well there. But uh, let's continue. So remember again, it is not a sin to get into debt only when, only under necessary circumstances. So don't start condemning people when they're when they're in a desperate situation and they're in a necessary circumstance. Uh, so when you're in a desperate situation and you have a necessary need, you shouldn't pray and wait on the Lord to provide your needs. You should go down to the bank and sign up, sign your life away. But remember, this is a general rule to follow. This is a general rule to follow. Christians should not get into debt. It becomes wickedness when you don't pay back. Now look at the book of James. See how I changed the text? It didn't say that. It says the wicked borroweth and payeth not again. Just remove that borroweth word there. James, here are two rules to follow concerning this question before getting into debt. The first question you should ask yourself, we're going to look at verses 13 through 16. The first question is, are you rashly presuming the prophets to happen? If that's your automatic mindset, that is a sin. Look at James chapter 4, verse 13 through 16. The Bible says actually that don't automatically think tomorrow that you're going to buy this or profit out of this. Go to now ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Alright, the second rule. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 through 16. Well, I said he was reading the verse 16 there in James chapter 4. Well, let's finish up there. Uh, verse 15, For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. Rejoicing is evil. Um, if the Lord will. Uh, how does that work out when you're getting borrowing money from the lost world? Hmm. And you know what will be on the morrow if you're borrowing on from the lost world. You don't rely on the Lord. You're not living by faith. Don't worry. The Lord's going to provide for us. I know He will. I don't have to worry about that, brother. I'll get my credit card out. Amen. Go down to the bank get me a mortgage. Amen. Philippians 4, verse 13 through 16. Mm -hmm. The second question you should be asking yourself is this. Oh, excuse me. Verse 19. Verse 19. The second question you should be asking yourself is, are you rejecting God's provisional care for somebody else's? So if you don't turn to the Lord first, but you turn to your best friend, your family member, to pay the money, but not God first, then don't you think that you're in the wrong? Yes. See, people who tend to go into debt, what they, like, what they always do naturally first is look to people first more than God. And when you have that mindset, that is wrong. Amen. Let's look at uh, okay, then what other thing is there with with debt and mortgage? Looking to people first instead of God uh, Isn't that the whole system? See these guys get all mixed up it's Crazy if it's wrong if it's condemned in scripture, then don't do it. All sin is negative The Brian Dunninger phrase that I always put in all my different studies all sin is negative debt is is sin okay you can get away from sin you can get out of sin and you'll feel very good when you do get victory over sin goodbye debt i'm not going back into that again if i don't have it then i won't spend it period unless you need to <laughs> at the book of philippians 
Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. There's a famous story by George Mueller. He never begged. He never begged or asked. He never got into debt at all by asking or borrowing. He only prayed to the Lord for money. And guess what? Met his need every single time. But that doesn't work anymore? Uh, and I'm a modern-day George Mueller on that whole thing there. I haven't borrowed money in, I don't even know how long, since I was a teenager. Back when I was lost. The entire time I've been saved, I've never borrowed money for anything. Oh, but, you know, that was back then. We can't do it anymore. I, I'm doing it. A lot of you are doing it. Living debt-free. Or you're heading there. During the days where he's at, during the 1800s, so he died with praying over millions of dollars to happen. During those old days, do you know how much money that was? Crazy expensive. So you notice right... See the old days, you know, back then? Yeah. You hear that that's why concerning debt, consider this as a general rule to follow. It is not suggested. But only in necessary situations you do it. It becomes wicked when you don't pay back. These are the two questions you should always ask yourself. Um, and you say, why is this video important to do right now, Brian? Uh, very simple, because America is dying. USdebtclock.org. Debt per citizen, 97584 Debt per taxpayer, $253,686. Um, you know, it's insane. You know, federal debt to GDP ratio back in the 19, in 1960, 52.52%, now 119.13%. I mean, just look at it, uh, just drowning in debt. And this kind of preaching right here, oh, well, it's just, you know, it's only when it's necessary. That's the only time it's okay and whatever else. And the passage he went through there had nothing to do with borrowing money, going out and borrowing some pots and things that you get from uh, your neighbors to put more oil in so you can go sell it and pay your bill. That was God's provision. And what did she do with the pots after she was done using them? She gave them back. So I just wanted to put that video together quickly here. It just angers me, just frustrates me, this kind of false, these false prophets that are coming out calling themselves real Bible believers. I'm a King James Bible believer. No, they're not. Uh, please do not be deceived by Gene Kim. I'll put a bunch of other videos here at the end, the links and things, the stuff that this guy's come out and said, where he just flat out rejects the Bible, and um, don't fall for him. Okay? Uh, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.